This is Andy yeah. Paul for Boxing Social in association with Betfred, and I'm delighted to be joined by, for the first time, Jordan Dujan over Zoom. Jordan, first and foremost, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me. No, I appreciate your time, mate. Obviously, it's good to catch up with you for the first time, as I've mentioned. How have you found life in lockdown, as I've asked everybody else who I've interviewed so far? Um, to be honest with you, I was struggling for a long time. Um, it's only probably the last two and a half weeks, three weeks that we've actually been able to resume training. Um, so yeah, it was just running, running, more running, more running. But um, it's not the same as being in a gym. We've obviously saw, <clears throat> excuse me, we've obviously seen um, kind of lockdown restrictions ease over the past two, three weeks. How have you found kind of being able to get back into the gym and seeing the rest of the guys and what have you? Um, yeah, it's been really positive. Um, yeah, because obviously when it's the, my camp that I'm with pretty much all day, every day, and not seeing them for the best part of two and a half, three months, I mean, in person, um, obviously you appreciate um, getting back in the gym with everyone. Obviously, just pick that back up there, George, and just a slight technical issue. Um, yeah, take me back to kind of your earliest memory of a sport and your route into boxing. Yeah, so um, my route into boxing... Um, happened about three, four years ago now, um, was when Anthony Joshua won his world title against Charles Martin. Um, before that, I didn't have any interest in boxing. Um, I'd done kickboxing for a few years before. Um, always gravitated towards boxing, but seeing people like Wes Jones Jr., Mike Tyson, having hundreds of fights as an amateur, I didn't think that I would be able to do a route into boxing, especially starting that late. Um, but seeing him basically fast track through the amateurs, then go to Team GP, win a gold medal, and then go on to win a world title. I thought, you know what, I might be able to do this. Um, so I basically spent two years as an amateur. Um, in that time, I won a national title and a London title. Um, and then I thought, oh, just um, go straight into the professional ranks and see how I get on. What made you take the decision to turn over so soon with just those two years under your belt? Was there a temptation when you started to gain success to stick at the amateur kind of scene for a bit longer, see where that could take you? Or were you kind of just determined to fast track yourself, as you've said uh, earlier on in the interview? Um, to be honest with you, I think it was more so because I'd started so late. I thought um, the amateur and professional ranks are completely different. So I thought if I'm going to learn uh, my craft, I might as well do it in professional ranks rather than trying to um, spend more years as an amateur and then convert later on. You mentioned you know, the influence Anthony Joshua has had on your decision to take up the sport. What is it in particular about AJ that you kind of, I don't know whether you can say you resonate with or you can see that you want to try and achieve a similar kind of feat as to what he has as his career progressed? Um, I'm not too sure what it is, to be honest with you. He's um, a nice guy. Um, to come from humble backgrounds and it's just a matter of just sticking out something and see where it could take you basically. Um, it's probably more than that than anything else. For he then, for you, for yourself then, sorry, was, was AJ kind of your inspirational role model in boxing or certainly of these kind of, this era at least? Yeah, yeah, definitely, 100%. 100%, yeah. And obviously making that move over from amateur to professional, how did you find that, the transition of styles? Um, to be honest with you, um, I find it fairly easy. Um, it might be just because of the level of opponents that I've fought so far. Um, and my style of boxing pretty much covers mo the majority of the fundamentals. So I didn't find it that hard of a change. Um, going up the ranks, I might find it completely different. So it's about the early phases and, and stages of your career, Ben. How have you found, you know, you're 4-0 now. How have you found the beginning? Um, I've enjoyed it. Um, it's much different to amateur boxing. Um, amateur boxing is almost like a thousand miles per hour. Um, professional boxing, you've got a lot more time to think. Um, I prefer it. Not, I, I do prefer it, yeah. You obviously said, you know, you see what AJ has achieved in such a short space of time. One of the mm -hmm. biggest factors and benefiting factors AJ had was, was he was picked up by you know, Eddie Hearn and Matrium and given those opportunities instantly. In comparison, you're not obviously of that same kind of fortunate position, as, as it were. How do you find it with regards to that? Do you find it a lot more difficult to try to progress your career? or? Um, it's a good question. I think at the stage I'm at now, um, I'm probably better off learning under the bright lights um, so when I do get the opportunity, obviously I'm announcing myself on that stage. Um, had this pandemic not had happened, um, I would have liked to have announced myself going into next year, being maybe 10-0, um, 
going straight in for a title fight. Um, but we've just got to wait and see how the pandemic plays out and then see where we can go from there. That's what I was going to ask you, you know, prior to you know, COVID-19, going back to kind of March when lockdown was put into place, how did you see this year playing out for yourself? Um, well, I think my last fight was in March. Um, I would have had two in May. Um, pretty much I would have been fighting every two months. Um, two in May and then July, September, and then maybe even a fight at the end of the year for a title about Southern Era or English. Obviously, at the beginning you know, stages of your professional career, as does everybody, whether you're somebody who's gone down the GB route or you're just starting out you're like yourself in the boxing world, you kind of have to go through this phase of fight fighting either journeymen or people who have a similar record to yourself. Yeah. Sorry. Um, what kind of experiences do you take away from facing journeymen? Ooh, um... I think that's a tough question. I think it just gives you a look at dealing with the pressures that come with professional boxing. And um, with amateurs, um, there's a common theme that oh, your amateur record doesn't matter. But in professional boxing, every fight counts. Um, so you just want to make sure that you cover as much experience as you can um, whilst you get there, I suppose. Do you feel the pressure on yourself when you step into the ring, knowing that you you know you have such lofty ambitions, and you as again like we've said, you know AJ was your role model. Do you feel the pressure to to make sure you don't slip up to try and give yourself the best chance on achieving what your goals are in the sport? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm very critical of myself as well. So if I do a performance, let's just say it's against a journeyman, and I don't think it's up to par, I will be very hard on myself. Um, in terms of pressure. I, don't really feel pressure on the night. Um, I might reflect on it afterwards, but on the night, I'm 100% focused, so I don't really feel up to it too tough, to be fair. Obviously, you know, <clears throat> boxing at Super World 2 currently, you're looking to move down towards Walter. Mm -hmm. How are you, do you think you're going to find making that move, simply because, you know, there's a lot of talk about people making weight, and there's a lot of talk about kind of the issues it can have with, with regards to the detriment, detrimental effects how do you think your coat will be dropping down? Um, to be honest with you, I've not really been someone that's ever struggled to make weight. Um, purely for the reason being, I pretty much eat what I want. Um, might not need to train as hard as anyone else to lose the weight. Um, the weight just tends to fall off of me. Um, so I think going down to what weight, I find it really easy to be honest with you. What do you kind of make of the domestic welterweight scene when, when you look at the likes of Josh Kelly, then you know, the Carl Brooks, the Amir Khans? What do you make of certainly the, the higher up names in the welterweight division? I mean, you've got the locks of Luther Clay and Chris Congo who were scheduled to face each other before lockdown as well. Mm. Uh, the, the welterweight division is stacked, especially domestic level. Um, and I think if you do well in the domestic scene in the welterweight, you, I think you're going to excel in the world scene as well because we've got some of the best welterweights in the world here. Whilst I've got you obviously on the welterweight scene, what do you make of kind of firstly? Luther Clay versus Chris Congo, if that was to go ahead? Oh, that's, um, that's a brilliant fight. Uh, I'm not too sure who I fancy over that one. Um, I, I prefer Chris Congo's style, to be fair. Um, I think he's got a lot more experience. Um, I've not really seen enough of, of Clay to say, to give my opinion, but I think Chris Congo is, is quality. So we briefly mentioned earlier, you've got the locks of Josh Kelly, Raquel Brooks, and, you know, Amir Khan still knocking about as well. Wait and see what happens with him. In your opinion, who is the number one at World Tour in Britain? The number one World Tour? Hmm. I think you've got to give it to Kel Brook, really. Yeah, I'll give it to Kel Brook. On the world scene at Walter, one thought which you know, it's got many fans talking about, they'd love to see is a potential bout between Terence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr. Jordan, mm. if that thought was to happen, just break it down for me. Ah, uh, so the thing is, these are, these are two are probably one of my favourite fighters at the minute. Um, Terence Crawford is a slick operator. Southport orthodox, he can do pretty much anything. Um, Errol Spence is a powerhouse, can box. I personally think that the weight advantage um, of Errol Spence on the night is going to play a massive part of that, especially going into the later rounds, um, him hitting the body, and I think that would be the difference. 
Another man who I'm interested to get your thoughts on in that division is Manny Pacquiao. You know, a lot of people kind of still probably getting just just surprised by just how good he still is all these years on into his professional career. Seems to be getting better with age. You know, what do you feel Manny still has left to offer in boxing? You know what, Manny is one of them. He's just, he's just a freak, really. He's just, you don't expect him to just keep pulling it out of the bag. But um, I think when you put him up against other world-level um, welterweights, such as um, Errol Spence, I personally think um, Errol Spence will be too strong and he can hold it over too long of rounds. Um, if you saw in the last fight against Furman, um, he started to fade off coming six, seven seventh rounds and that's where the age started to show. So I think someone that's young and hungry like Errol Spence, I think, I think Errol Spence will take that. Jordan, another man who once again, you know, you, your role model of a guy who you kind of followed into boxing, Anthony Joshua. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was about a week and a half to two weeks ago now, AJ Fury had agreed financial terms in principle for two fights in 2021. When you heard that news, Jordan, what was your reaction to it? Oh, I was over the moon. I mean, it's heavy with boxing at the end of the day. I and mean, it's the two that I consider to be the best in the sport. Um, Technique-wise, they're exciting fighters. Um, great personalities. I mean, yeah, I was over the moon. How do you think that fight plays out? It's kind of it's divided fans' opinions. A lot of people, m more people kind of seem to be edging towards Fury on the back of that Wilder victory, showing a different side to the style we've been used to seeing from Tyson throughout his career. Going yeah. into that fight, if it was to obviously go ahead, how do you think it plays out? You know what? The thing is, I go back and forth with this one because um, when I look at Tyson Fury's boxing style, he's very awkward. He's going to hit and move for 12 rounds. Um, obviously, AJ's been um, put in the bracket of, oh, he's got no stamina. So how's that going to work out if he doesn't go past six rounds? But when you look at someone like Tyson Fury v, uh, I think it was Wallen or Watlin, his last fight before the Otto Wilder. Otto Valley. Yeah. yeah, I think he struggled on the inside. And that fight, AJ, he's not going to box on the back foot. He's going to come in, work the inside, work the body, um, so it'd be interesting to see how he copes with that. So with that one, I'm on the fence with because I don't think Fury lives with AJ on the inside. But if it's a case of he's going to box and move and do what AJ done to Ruiz, um, then obviously I think uh, Fury will nick it because he's just so awkward. Jordan, it's been a pleasure to speak to you for the first time. But before I let you go to enjoy the rest of your day, what would you like to say to everyone who tunes in to watch our interview? Um... Just thanks for having me. Um, you can follow me on Jordan X Dujon on Instagram. Um, stay tuned. I'm going to be doing some exciting things towards the end of the year. Um, so, yeah, follow my journey. Jordan, it's been a pleasure to catch up with you. Stay safe, mate, and I will catch up with you soon once again. Thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. Thank you. <laughs>